Today I'm going to show you how to make a Tunisian crochet scarf using the mesh stitch. I love this stitch because it doesn't curl. You've got these nice spaces in between. It's a quick workup. It would look fabulous as a blanket or a scarf. You've got these nice ends. You don't have to worry about doing a finishing row when you're done. And like I said, you can add tassels or you can just leave it without. It's a perfect beginner Tunisian crochet pattern. So if you're not used to Tunisian crochet, this is a perfect pattern for you. We use the simple Tunisian stitch, but we create these little, this mesh pattern, these little holes in here by yarning over and skipping every other stitch. You can make this as long as you want or as short as you want. The perfect Tunisian crochet stitch. For today's project, I'm going to be using a six millimeter, let's see if you can see that. It's a six millimeter long Tunisian crochet hook. The Red Heart Soft Essentials. It is a bulky weight size five yarn. This particular one has 131 yards in it. It's five ounces or 141 grams. I am using this in a cream as well as a teal color. And they're soft. They work up really easily, especially on the crochet hook, the Tunisian crochet hook. You'll also need scissors and, of course, a yarn needle to weave in ends. You can use any size crochet hook that you want and any size and weight and color of yarns. For this project, I have used approximately two balls of each, so four in total. But again, depending on the length and your tension, you may need a little bit more or a little bit less. To start the Tunisian mesh stitch scarf, you're going to want a foundation chain of any odd number. So for mine, I am going to do a foundation chain of 33. So we start with a slip knot on our Tunisian crochet hook and you just do a chain in any odd number. Once you have your odd number foundation chain, we are going to work the Tunisian simple stitch for this first row. To do that, put your hook into the first stitch, pull up a loop, and you should have two loops on your hook. Do the same thing with the next, three loops on your hook, same thing with the next, and so on, all the way down your chain. When you get to the end, you should have the same number of loops on your hook that you that your foundation chain was. When you get to the end, put your hook in that last stitch, drop a loop. You've got all your loops on your long Tunisian crochet hook, and now we're going to work the backward pass. So to do that, yarn over and pull back through one. Yarn over, pull back through two. Yarn over, pull back through two. Yarn over, pull back through two. And you're going to yarn over and pull back through two all the way until you have one loop left on your hook. And this reverse or backward pass is the same for the entire pattern. So anytime you're working this way, you're always going to be doing this. Yarn over, back through two, all the way back. All right, so I'm back here. I've got one loop left on my hook. 
this loop on my hook will always match up with this bar right underneath it. We've got our next bar right here. You can see it right here. Next bar right here. You can see all those bars, they kind of pop up. To work the mesh stitch, we're going to work into the first bar and pull up a loop. So now we have two on our hook. Into the next, we're going to skip. So we're going to work in every other one, but we don't want to lose our stitch count. So we need to yarn over, skip that next bar, and go to the next one. And draw up a loop. So now we still have the same amount of loops on our hook, but we have yarned over and skipped this bar. But they still line up together. You're going to do that again, yarn over, skip the next bar, and work into the following. Draw up a loop, skip the next, and draw up a loop through the next. So basically you're just yarning over and working into the vertical bar. Yarn over, work in, skip one, work into the next. So we just worked into that one. Let's yarn over, skip Skip the next and work into the following. And you're going to do that all the way down to the end. All right, I have worked all the way down to the end. Here's my last yarn over, and I worked into this bar. We don't want to forget this bar on the very, very end. We're not going to yarn over because we're working directly into it. And it is the next one, we're not skipping any. You want to put your hook into the front of it and into the back loop that is sitting right behind it. So you'll have these two loops on your hook for that one stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And you can see where the yarn overs that we did have created the little spaces. Now we're going to work a reverse pass. So we yarn over, go back through one. You always just want to start going back through one for the first stitch on the reverse pass. Then we can yarn over and do the back through two, back through two, back through two. So there we go. There's our first mesh stitch pattern row and you can see it creates these little spaces. For the next row, again we're going to go into that first bar and you have to be careful because there will be a bar that sits right, almost right next to it and you don't want to go into that one, you want to go into that front one every time. So we're going to work into that front bar, that first one, two loops on our hook, yarn over, we're going to skip this space, don't work into these back, these back bars, you want to hit that front one, pull up a loop, yarn over, don't go into the back one, make sure you're going into that front one, yarn over, front bar. So once you get that initial first row, it'll be obvious where your yarn overs are because it'll create that space. You're just going to yarn over, go into that front uh, vertical bar all the way across. You just have to remember to yarn over before you continue. I'm at the end. I've just put a yarn over and worked a stitch into that front vertical bar. Not going to forget this last one. Put my hook through the first one and into the one right behind it. Yarn over and pull up a loop. 
for the reverse pass, always yarn over, go back through one. And then we can start the yarn over, go back through th two. This time I'm going to show you how to change colors. If you want to change colors in your scarf, work all the way back until there are two loops left on your hook. I have two loops left on my hook and I'm going to grab my new color. I'm going to drop my old color. I'm going to pick up my new color. I'm just going to leave a little bit of a tail so I can weave it in. I'm going to lay that new color over my hook. Bring my hook down. Now I've got that one and I've changed colors. And now we can continue working the pattern into that first bar. Just going to yarn over and, or not yarn over, I'm just going to pull up a loop. Now we can start the yarn over. Yarn over that front bar only. Yarn over, don't get that back bar. Sometimes it's misleading and you think that's the right bar because they do kind of pop up sometimes. Make sure you're always getting that front bar. And just work this all the way to the end. When you get to the end, you've worked into your last obvious vertical bar. We are just going to work into that last end stitch. Drop a loop and now we can work our reverse pass back through one and back through two all the way back. And here I am back again. Once you get back to this point, you can kind of tighten these up, pull them a little bit, not too tight because you don't want to um, cinch your fabric up, but just a little bit so that stitch sits down a little bit more. And now you can kind of see how this mesh is forming. So continue to work your scarf. You can make your rows, your color change stripes as long as you want, as short as you want. You can use all one color. It's really up to you. So keep working that until you get the length of the scarf that you like and I will show you how to finish off the last row. I am working my reverse pass after I've done the last row of the mesh stitch. The next row we will work a regular simple Tunisian stitch. So I'm not going to be yarning over, I'm not going to be skipping. To do that we're going to go into that first stitch, pull up a loop. Here is our yarn over, I'm going to go into that stitch right there. Drop a loop, I'm going to go into that bar that lies right there. So you're actually working in the, the little bars behind as well as the ones in front. When you get to the end of this row, you should have the same number of stitches on your hook as you had for your foundation chain. So always check that. It's an easy way to see if you're on count. Once you have all of your loops on your hook, I'm going to make sure that I work into that last stitch on the end, going through both the front and the back loop, and pull up a loop. So now I should have my 33 stitches on my hook and I can work a regular reverse pass. Yarn over back through the first one and yarn over back through two the rest of the way. Once you get back to the end you'll have one loop left on your 
crochet hook. You can see that last row sort of finished it off. We want to cut our yarn at this point and just pull it through like that. Weave that end in and all of your other ends if you've been changing colors. Sometimes for these I like to knot them once and then weave them in. But of course when you're changing colors you'll have a lot of little ends to weave in. But there you go. The mesh stitch. Tunisian crochet mesh stitch. stitch. Try saying that five times fast. It is a perfect stitch for scarves and blankets. You can see the back side, the front side. It creates that mesh stitch and it doesn't curl, at least not as much. You've got a nice color change seam in here. You can add tassels at the end of your scarf. Comes out really cute. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Until next time, happy Tunisian crocheting everyone. Bye!